Shane Castillo, the one that got away. The Guardians took him number one overall. He looks like he's going to be pretty good. He's a 75 overall already. Just going to kind of scroll through here so you guys could take a look at some of the players. This one, Beltron, he looks pretty solid as well. There is a 99 overall in here that we'll get to in a minute. Mason, here he is. Andre Green, the A's selected him, 18-year-old. He's a 68 overall, potential 99. Looks like somewhat of a generational talent at second base, can also play third base there. The A's, they're, they're, they're going for that number one pick overall again. So they're gonna be one to look at in the upcoming years, as well as the Rays, who we saw have a lot of good prospects, but I'll let you go ahead and slow down the video or pause it if you wanna take a look at some of these. Pretty good draft class. I'm happy with Franz though. Franz is gonna be a stud. So our Pirates team is still somewhat in the chase of the wild card, but we gotta win some of these games against the Diamondbacks. We jump into a situation with Chapman on the mound in the top of the eighth inning. It is seven to eight, Pittsburgh. Reynolds going back to catch this one. It's over his head and goes over the fence. Ground roll double to start out. Brings up the next batter, hits a fly ball to McCutcheon. Will they tag up? They are, throw to third base. We didn't throw it to third base. We threw it to second base. What out runner on third for the Diamondbacks in this somewhat important game here in August. We gotta win some of these to stay in the hunt. It's real close to that wild card getting out of our grasp. See if Chapman can get a hold here and get us into the ninth inning with the lead. Got a one-two count against Cattell Marte. Strike him out. Chapman not doing too bad here. We're going to get some other guys warmed up. We'll get the closer going, the new closer, as we face off against Corbin Carroll, last year's Rookie of the Year for the Diamondbacks. Looks at the first pitch, strike. Chapman delivers outside, ball one. One and one. One and one counts. Going to try to hit the inside corner. Carroll pops up to Hayes. That'll take us to the ninth. Or the bottom of the eighth, I should say. O'Neal Cruz leading off the eighth inning, the bottom of the eighth for us. It looks like he is one for three in this game. That should be a base hit down the... Oh, the umpire called it fair. What happened here? The umpire absolutely called this fair. The home plate umpire overrule him? Let's look at this, see the ball. Let's see if we can see this. Yeah, that's close, but the third base umpire there, he says it's a fair ball. What the heck? All right, let's get back into it. 0-1 count for Cruz. That is strike two. I thought that was going to be outside. Got to 0-2 count here. Got to get some clutch hits. We want a bigger lead going into the bottom of the ninth. Or the top of the ninth. Ball. Apologize. One ball, two strikes. 1-2 count to Cruz. Mantiply delivers. Ball. Ball two. Two two count. Cruz seems pretty loose and relaxed. Let's see if he can get a base hit here. There's a ball hit to the third baseman. Fields it cleanly over to first base. Oh. One down in the eighth. Yeah, that brings up Andrew McCutcheon. Two for two on the game. Oh two delivery to McCutcheon. That's outside for a ball. One, two. One and two count. There's now a two and two count to McCutcheon. Pitcher delivers. Foul ball. He's battling. Two-two pitch is delivered and strikes out McCutcheon. Two down in the bottom of the eighth. We get a chance to see our new closer. Here he is. Not gonna be a long-term experiment here. We gotta look for this in free agent next year. We're gonna try to find a young reliever that we can make our closer. It's going to be tough. But Moretta delivers his first pitch. Ball one outside. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. with a 1-2 count. That's a nice base hit. McCutcheon's going to go field it. we we'll see if we can hold him to one. He turns for second. That's going to be a double for Gurriel. Closer's already in trouble. Lawler is going to be the pinch runner. He's a 98 speed. Jock Peterson on the at bats. Base hit to Reynolds. Reynolds is going to throw it home. The throw is not online. That's going to tie the ball game up. 
That was quick. Pinch runner again with McCarthy on first base now. Christian Walker at bat. Foul ball. 0-2 count to Walker. What a typical Christian Walker at bat. This is the ninth pitch of the at bat, and he goes down looking on strikes. Very typical Christian Walker. Now we got one out in the ninth inning. Let's see if we can hold this tie here. Suarez up to bat. Ground ball to Hayes. Hayes cannot reach it. Reynolds will have to field it in the outfield. They're trying for third there. We're going to gun him out. McCarthy is out, and that was pretty realistic of McCarthy as well. He is an aggressive base runner. But Reynolds says no, no, no. That brings up Alec Thomas. Two outs in the top of the ninth. Runner on first. Foul ball. 1-1 one, one count. That slider just misses. It was pretty low. 2-1 count. That'll even out the count. 2-2 two and two to Alec Thomas with two outs in the ninth inning. That's a base hit to Reynolds. These guys are just crushing it against us. This is not how you get back in the wild card race. Come on, guys. That brings up Moreno. Gabby's having a pretty good season, from what I understand, in our franchise. He had a great rookie year as well, just overshadowed by Corbin Carroll last year a little bit. 15 balls, 19 strikes, 24 pitches so far for Moretto. And that's a foul ball. 1-2 count still. 8-8 eight, eight ball game in the ninth inning with two outs. Two and two. Count is even at two each. That'll make it full. Full count. 3-2. With Perdomo on deck. That's a ground ball to Cruz. Cruz fields it. He's not going to be able to get the throw over in time. Bases loaded. Cruz did everything he could do there. We're going to go to Holderman. We're going to put him in the game, see if Holderman can get an out here for us to keep the game tied as we head into the bottom of the ninth, hopefully. That's a ball just outside. Ground ball to Hayes. He's just going to take it to his base and take us to the ninth, the bottom of the ninth. The Jock Peterson drives in the game tying run. Michael A. Taylor, 0 1 count. A went, strike two, 0 2. Taylor facing an 0 2 count here for the second time in this at bat. He's 1 for 4 on the day. Looks at a ball outside, 1 2 count. And he looks at strike three, one out in the bottom of the ninth. That'll bring up Key Brian Hayes. He's two for four on this game. We're going to call timeout, though. Make sure we're set right. I like to get the little warm-up swing in there. There's a deep fly to center field. Carroll's going to get under it. Two down. Or is that Thomas out there? Who's playing center today for the Diamondbacks? Probably Thomas, since he's in the lineup. Andy Rodriguez up here. He's two for four as well. Two down in the bottom of the ninth. Need to get a base runner going here. One, one count as the crowd is chanting, let's go Bucks. Trying to get this team motivated. Give them a little bit of boost here at a home game against a team that is in third place in the wild card running. So this is the team we'd be trying to catch. One, two count. I believe we're three and a half games behind them right now, and this is a crucial series. There's a deep fly ball to the gap, potentially. No, Carroll gets under it. That'll end the ninth. In the top of the 11th, we have Jake McCarthy up to bat. He's going to move the runner to third with a ground ball to bay. One away. That brings up Christian Walker, who is two for four with a home run today. Runner at third, one out. He's looking to just hit the ball anywhere, anywhere out of the infield to get this run in. So the Diamondbacks are 13 and a half games behind the Dodgers right now. There's a deep fly ball to McCutcheon. I don't believe his arm's strong enough to save this run. Perfect throw though. Just not gonna get there in time. Nine to eight Diamondbacks. And he swings through the sinker this time. Just can't get the timing down. 
Diamondbacks take a very important game here in August. Now we're trying to do some of these situations, but the Diamondbacks don't give us one to play with, apparently. No custom game entry conditions were met, so we lost that game as well. Going into the third game of the series, Jordan Montgomery. How did they? How did that work out? They get him in real life, they get him in the game. Even though we didn't start the season in time, let's jump into this one. Looks like it is the bottom of the seventh. Down 2 nothing. trying not to get swept by the D-backs. Got a runner on first, two outs. Foul ball by Indy. Indy has a 13-game hitting streak. I have a feeling that's what the situation was for, to see if we can extend his hit streak to 14 games. We go ahead and steal. And he's safe. Lankford with his fourth stolen base of the year. Got a little speed from uh, Lankford, apparently. Able to steal some bases on the left-handed pitcher, but then Rodriguez grounds to shortstop to Perdomo. That'll end the seventh. And another opportunity for Rodriguez in the bottom of the ninth. 3-1 now. It looks like Davis hit a RBI double. Perdomo hit a double as well, or at least an RBI. I didn't get a chance to completely read that. Rodriguez is 167 for the season with runners in scoring position. 1-1 one, one count here in the bottom of the ninth. Trying to avoid the sweep. Not looking good right now. Also trying to extend his hitting streak, as we mentioned earlier. It's a foul ball. 1-2 count to Rodriguez. Seawald on the mound with his 11th pitch of his outing. Delivers it high. Rodriguez swings through it. Foul ball. Good timing there. Nothing else you can really do. Just hope they get better contact next time. And then you swing at an inside pitch that you should have let go. That'll end the ball game and put us six and a half games out of the wild card. Well, we've seen Lankford so far. Now let's take a look at Kobe Mayo. He's batting 318 in the minor leagues. Ball one there. Got a runner at first. He was 0 for 4 last game. Kobe's going to finish the year in AAA. We might debate bringing him up during the September call-ups, but I want him to come up in spring training, fight for the starting first baseman's role. He's not going to play third base. We got Key Brian Hayes there, but we're going to put him at first, potentially, as well as he could battle out for the DH position. But he strikes out here in the first. Let's get a good look at him here. And he's coming up again here in the top of the third. We are up two to nothing with a delay RBI and a Jeb RBI. There's a ground ball off the pitcher. Is he going to recover in time? He seems to. 0 for 2 for Mayo in his debut with us watching at least. Move to the fifth inning. 2 nothing game still. Swings through a slider on the inside corner. 0-1 counts. Fly ball to right field. I do like his swing. And usually when I play with players, depending on like how their swing is and how they feel, really determines how much I like playing with them. And I, I do enjoy Mayo so far. I feel like he's definitely going to be one of the stars of this team two or three seasons from now. 0, 0 for 3 today, though. 0-1 count here in the seventh inning. Holding on to that lead as the Indians in AAA try to fight for a playoff position. It would be pretty awesome if we got to see some minor league playoffs this year. That would be a good sign for us long term if our minor league clubs are battling for championships as they develop and move their way up to the big leagues. 0-2 count here on Mayo. That's shot. That is a shot. Is that going to carry? Oh, it's a one hopper to the wall. We're going to stretch it to a double potentially here. We're in there. That felt nice. Timed it up perfect. 107 exit velocity is fourth double of the year. Gotta love that. Perfect timing, opposite field. You'd hope he would be able to carry the wall on perfect timing. But we'll take the double. Here's another guy we got in the trade deadline here. Palacios, he strikes out though. Another bright potential future player for our team. We move to the ninth. We are now down five to two. They hit a grand slam against us. Ouch. 
Pitching all around when the bullpen is a struggle for our team as Mayo flies out to end the game. We got to work on that in the next few seasons. We're moving fast today. We're jumping to an opportunity with one runner on base in the bottom of the ninth, two outs. Brian Reynolds up to bat. Can he come in clutch for us? That's a foul ball. 0-1 count. Pitch incoming. That's inside. 1-1 count. Way ahead of the changeup. 1-2. and two. A lot of extra innings games this year for us. 1-2 pitch incoming. It is 2-2. Two and two. Staying away from Reynolds in these last two pitches. Full count. Taylor on deck. I think in a little bit we're going to swap the lineup out a little bit. I think I want to get Langford in the four hole. Give him a little bit of a chance here towards the end of the year as it winds down to get some, you know, a little bit more at bats than he'd get in the nine hole. Reynolds, did he just win the game? It's just foul. What a heartbreaker. 3-2 count here. Reynolds way ahead of the changeup. Can't time it. That'll take us to another extra inning game. Which jumps us ahead to the 10th inning here. With Falter on the mound. 0-1 pitch. Catches the corner. 0-2 count. Foul ball. 0-2 pitch again. Strikes him out. 1-1 one, one count to Kim. That's a ground ball to Cruz. That'll hold the runner at second. Two away from the top of the 10th. Xander Bogart's up to bat. Foul ball. That'll make it an 0-2 count. Let's get out of this. Let's get a chance to win it in the 10th. Hold the runner at second. That'll do it. Just catches the bottom of the plate. Strikes him out. Taylor up to bat. Reynolds on second base. Nobody out. Taylor is two for two. We're going to try to bunt again. That's terrible. That's terrible. Trying to play small ball, and I just suck at it. Well, that'll bring up Hayes. Hayes can be the hero. Pitch incoming. Ahead of the changeup. 0-1 counts. Almost timed that up just early. Swings at a high fastball, fouls it off down the right field line. 0-2 count to Hayes. 0-2 pitch delivered. Foul ball down the third baseline. Got to even that out now. We were late on one swing, early on the next. Pitch is delivered. Another foul ball down the third baseline. Now I have done some batting practice to try to get my timing a little bit better. I did that after recording this. Strikes out, that's two down. Just a little bit of practice to get a little bit better and nothing wrong with that, right? You know, just like the major league players do. I think uh, humans playing the game go through slumps as well as the players in the game. So I think I'm in a slump right now, but here's Andy Rodriguez. He's gonna fly out to right field and take us to the 11th inning. Another 11 inning game. And Machado's up to bat with a runner at seconds. We're gonna leave Falter in the game. That's just missed the corner, one one count. Pitch right down the middle, and that's going to get out of here. Five to three, Padres. Terrible pitch. Terrible pitch. Not much you can do there. We'll go ahead and fast forward this. Ended up being 10 to three. Oh, I guess we should have taken the pitcher out. Well, the losing streak continues. Next, we're going to hop into Jared Jones' start. He's 0 for 2 already with an 11.42 ERA. 
facing off against Otani. The future is bright for Jared Jones, but so far he has been struggling. We missed his first two starts playing the full game here against Shohei Otani. The Dodgers are 75 and 40. We are 53 and 61. Far off from that hot start we had in the first month of the year. But it's unrolling or unraveling exactly how we expected. Let's get this one underway. There he is. There's the man. He shouldn't be pitching this season, but I don't really have any control over that. 8 and 12, that's not great. His ERA is pretty high for him, I believe, for 49. Strikeouts not bad. More than one in inning. That's pretty ridiculous. A 1.39 whip. Let's see if we can do any damage against him. Cruz will lead off. He has 13 home runs this year. Not bad with missing a little over a month earlier in the season. First pitch is delivered, fouled off. 97 mile an hour fastball down the middle. That's a pretty good pitch. We gotta time that up better. We're not gonna get a lot of those. The cutter over the plate as well, fouled off to the first base side. Gotta even it out, gotta even it out. High fastball. Good timing on that, just fouled it off. Another one over the plate. We got to get this timing down. Fifth pitch here delivered 0-2 count. And Cruz blasts it to left field. One away. Looking at our lineup here, Taylor being the featured player here, batting 254. Belt 167 since joining the team. He's getting a start today. McCutcheon up to bat here, 268 on the season. Facing off against Otani. Let's see if he keeps it in the plate like he did with O'Neal. Cruz. That's a high cutter. Fouled off. Should have been ball one, but we swung at it. A one pitch delivered here. Pop out to the second baseman. Batting third. The left fielder, number 10. Brian Reynolds. Let's see Reynolds' first at bat today with 17 home runs and 60 RBIs on this season. Batting 283. Pitch incoming. Strike one right down the middle. Otani is not scared to throw strikes. Pitch incoming. Blasted to center field for a base hit by Reynolds. Let's get this going, Reynolds. That brings up Taylor batting 254, as we mentioned earlier. Perfect timing by Reynolds there. Just couldn't get under it. Nice base hit, and that's going to retire the side. But here he is, Jared Jones, 0-2. 8.2 innings pitched so far, 11.42 ERA with a whip over two. Only six strikeouts in eight innings. He's struggling. It might have been too soon to call him up. We'll let him fight through it the rest of the year. Let's see how he does in spring training next year, if he makes the club or not. But I have a feeling he's going to be great. He's one of the top prospects in baseball for a reason. He's got good stuff. The one thing that I noticed playing this game that I feel like might end up holding him back is McCutcheon can't get to that one. A leadoff base hit for Betts. He only has three pitches. That might hold him back. He has a fastball, a slider, and a changeup. A good combo when you only have three pitches, but not a huge amount of variety. So if you're guessing uh, pitches up there, you got a one out of 33 or a 33% chance to guess correctly as he gets ahead here of Outman. Foul ball, one, two counts. So we'll see. It'll be fun to watch him develop. Skeens is coming along pretty good, having a decent rookie year. You know, not overachieving, not underachieving, doing ex about what I thought he would do. I believe his ERA is around four and a half right now. I want to see Jones get his down after the first two rough starts he had. 11's a pretty high ERA for only pitching eight innings. It won't take very long to bring that ERA down because he's super early into his stay here in the big leagues. But at-bats like this is just going to hurt the pitch count. Not going to be able to stay in the game very long when you're having, you know, 10 pitches per at-bat here against Outman. Now we got a full count. 
with Freeman on deck. This lineup is tough. That's a ground ball to Cruz. That should turn two and end the inning. Very nice. Well, you can only end the inning when there's three outs. That's only two. I just didn't want to face Freeman. And here he is. He's batting 347 on the year. Freeman having another Freeman-like year. Wow. 0-1 pitch incoming. And he swings at it. We can get him to chase the slider. I don't know if that's an indicator of just a luck there or that Jones has stuff that people will chase as he chased an inside fastball there as well. Pop out to Rodriguez this time. That'll end the inning. And the top and the bottom of the second. Otani's up to bat here. One, one count. Throw a fastball on the inside corner there. And we don't get to the corner and he gets a base hit past Cruz. Two leadoff singles in both innings. Jones trying to get settled in here against Muncie. Strike one on the inside corner. Slider incoming. Oh, he hung that slider. Good thing Muncie didn't swing at that. And he chases the changeup. First strike out of the game for Jones. One away in the second. That brings up Will Smith. They foul ball to left field. Oh, one pitch incoming. That catches the corner. Oh, two. Okay. Decent stuff. And gets Smith swinging as well through a slider. I mean, this is good competition for, for Jones to face. He's holding his own so far. Runner on first, two outs. Hernandez fouls off to right field. That ball's in the dirt. Runner does not try to advance. That strike two on the corner. Placing the pitch is nice. Let's see if we can get him to swing on this. He does not. 2-2 two, two counts. I think Shelton wants the, the change up here. Let's give it to him. Foul ball. 2-2 two, two count. We'll do it again. And that's a ground ball pass for Guerrero. Runner Otani holds it second. Two runners on, two outs, bottom of the second. Hernandez is pumped. That brings up Hayward, my goodness. Jason Hayward's in the eight hole for this team, batting 282. Ridiculous, ridiculous lineup. 2-1 count to Hayward. That's inside, 3-1 count. Enrique Hernandez on deck. We'll do it again, full count. Gets him swinging in the fastball. He strikes out the side, but gives up two base hits. Jones not looking bad. Just the pitch count's getting up there already. We jump to the top of the fourth inning. One out. Brian Reynolds up to bat. 0-0 zero, zero counts. He gets a hold of one to right field. Is that going to get over the fence? It does. 1-0 Pittsburgh. Reynolds is 2-for-2. Two two, our only two hits of the game so far. He seems to have Otani's number. Maybe he can talk to the rest of the guys in the dugout and tell them what's happening. Tell them what pitches to look for. We need some teamwork. We need some... Uh, of that Reynolds magic to spread to the rest of the guys. Jump into the bottom of the fourth. Otani's up to bat, and he just crushes one. Did not like the fact that Reynolds hit that one off of him. It's 2-1 Los Angeles. That was crushed. And Jones is in in the fifth inning as well. 75th pitch delivered. Hayward with a gapper to left center. Reynolds hunts it down. Going to hold him to a double. Things seem to be somewhat unraveling for Jones. Pitch count's getting way up there, though. It's it's His energy's super low. Decent outing. You, you got to expect to give up a few runs with your starters and only scoring one run and really only having one hit, one player get hits is just not going to do it. You know, through five innings at this point, Reynolds has two base hits. We have a walk with Langford. Those are the only base runners we've seen. 
as this deep fly ball to McCutcheon is going to score a run. No way we're getting him tagging up. Belt throws it into home anyways. Two away in the fifth inning. Going to try to get Jones through five at least. Low to Outman there. 1-0 pitch. Fouled off. 1-1 delivery from Jones. His 81st pitch of the outing. Ground ball to Pereira. That'll get him out of the fifth. Top of the six, one out. Cruz is up to bat. He hits a drive to center field, but they run it down. Can't get the ball to drop unless Reynolds is batting. What a game for the Pirates. Bottom of the six, two outs. Holderman is in to pitch. Max Muncy with a shot to center field. Taylor has a chance to rob it, but we press the buttons incorrectly. I don't think he would have got it anyways. Four to one, Dodgers. Well, now here in the bottom, now here in the top of the seventh, it's 4-1 Los Angeles. Reynolds up to bat again. Pitches inside. Otani still on the mound. With only 59 pitches, we have not been selective enough in this game. His pitch count is still pretty low for being in the seventh inning. Reynolds the only man, as we've documented pretty well, to get a base hit today. Through six innings. Let's see if he can go three for three as he's just swinging at it. Ridiculous. One and two count. Pitch number 62 incoming. Ground ball. He gets past the second baseman, Betts. That's three for three for Reynolds. Tristan Beck is on the mound in the bottom of the eighth. And another hit by Otani. McCutcheon can't get to it. Going to throw it to home. Throw is offline, 5-1 LA, and Otani's doing a stupid dance. And this is things just really unravel. We're already down four runs. Muncie with a line drive up the middle. That'll move the runner to third. Taylor can't pick up the ball. He throws it away pretty much. Otani coming home and scores. We just don't know what we're doing. This team looks like they should be in triple A, if not double A at this point. That brings up Will Smith. First pitch is outside. Beck struggling. I think Beck will be pretty decent for us, but he's he's struggling. That's in the dirt. Runner does not try to advance. We throw it to second anyways. Just flabbergasted. 6-1 Dodgers in the bottom of the eighth. And there's a hit by Hayes. Reynolds tries to field it. We'll attempt to throw it to the cutoff man and not try to throw him out at home. It is 7-1 Dodgers. This one got out of hand. Well, the Dodgers do end up beating us today 7-1. to one. We had three hits. They were all by Reynolds. The bats just, we couldn't get them going today. Jones only giving up three runs. You can't ask for more than that. That's a decent outing. Seven hits, four strikeouts. Not bad for the rookie. Taking a look at the completed transactions here, specifically the trades. I'm going to kind of scroll through here and let you take a look at it. We'll see the things that seem important to us. Jesus Sanchez moving from the Marlins to the Twins is kind of a big move. That guy is pretty solid. We just scroll down here. A lot of these are going to be our trades. You can see our, our trade for Kobe Mayo, I, th I think, was fine. I think that trade was fine. The one that really jumps out here is the Nationals moving Dylan Cruz for Jeffrey Springs. So Cruz goes to the Rays, and that's why the Rays are getting so stacked because of trades like that. Dylan Cruz I used last year in MLB 23. Absolutely loved him. He turned into a beast. Kind of interesting to see that happen. Earlier on in the video, we went through this. I wanted to take another kind of look at specifically the division rivals here. Well, this is a player we were scouting didn't turn out too great there but here we go the Brewers have a couple of 86s in Hatfield here he's a center fielder 61 overall right now then we have Pacheco here who is 64 overall so they got some players that could come in in a year or two from this draft going over to the Reds we got Howard Young a starting pitcher we're going to probably face a lot in this series 68 overall right now B potential 89s where he can max out they also have Angel Ramos here. Then the Cubs have a player that didn't sign, so he might be in the draft next season. He was out of high school, probably be going to college. Silva, their number one pick, was a 79 overall. Not too hot for them. And just kind of scroll through the rest here if you want to take a peek. Maybe pause the video, 
take a look at it, but I did want to show these another time just so everyone can see what's going on around the league. Andre Green, definitely the guy to look out for. We'll be checking in on him throughout the series and see how he's developing. He's got a 72 arm already for a second baseman. That seems to be a waste. Derek Mason, another 90. There wasn't a lot of 90s, really. Kind of an underwhelming draft overall, as far as I'm concerned. I think we did pretty good in the draft ourselves, but Kobe Mayo, I think is gonna be a huge future of the team. Bryce Eldridge is still just at a 61, not developing very fast for us. As the season kind of unravels and falls apart for the Pirates, we're taking another look at Kobe Mayo today. He's 0 for 1 today. This is the fourth inning. Fouls off the pitch there. Runner at first. We're down by one run. Trying to hold on to that first place lead in AAA. 0-2 count to Mayo. O2 pitches delivered. Swings at a high fastball. Good contact, but if that's his good contact, contact was weak. Timing was good. My apologies there. The ball did drop in. Bad luck for uh, whoever that was on first base there, I think. Oh, no, Eldridge is after us. So this, this combo here, we got Mayo and Eldridge batting. Could be something we see a lot in the future as Eldridge grounds out to end the inning. Moving to the sixth inning, it is now tied. We have a runner on second base with one out. Johnson hit a solo home run to tie the game. We haven't looked at him, but we will start featuring him a whole lot next year, especially in spring training as he tries to battle for that second base position. I don't want to bring him up and be a bench player, so I don't think he'll be our September call up. I want him to play every day. We'll take a look at him, though, and see if he's ready as Mayo flies out to second <laughs> left field. Apologies there for the second time of the game. He is out. He's now one for three or 0 oh for three. That was an error on the last one. That one dropped. I thought they gave him a base hit and a pop out here. We contact every time. I don't know what's up with that. Good, good contact on on those as well. Just didn't go our way. We do get to see him in the field here with two outs and a runner on first. I like the sleeve. Good looking player here. Backhands it, throws it over to Eldridge. What a combo in AAA. Tied in the 11th inning with the ghost runner at second base. One away. Let's see if Mayo can be the hero here. That ball was outside. It was on the it was on the it was on the corner. Okay, okay, it was on the corner. Oh one pitch incoming. From Lytle. Lies? Li lies. One two count to Mayo here in the eleventh inning. Really testing his clutch here. See how clutch he is. That is a ball. Two and two. Pitch coming. That's a strike. We looked at it. Didn't get a chance to be the hero because we choked. We do end up losing that game one to two. Unfortunate. We jump in late in the ninth inning to a tie game. Jeb is up to bat. I unfortunately forgot to hit record for a lot of content in this episode. We played a lot of games in the month of August with both the Major League Club and the AAA Club, and we missed a ton of them because I forgot to hit the record button. But here Jeb is up in the ninth inning. 1-1 one one count. He's 0 for 2 today. 8-8 eight, eight ball game. Wow. High scoring game here. There's a line drive down the first base line, but just foul. We'll do it again. 1-2. That's a high ball, 2-2 two, two count. Jeb with a good eye there. 2-2 two, two pitch incoming. And he flies out. That will stay in the infield to the second baseman. Two away. But that gives us a chance to see Eldridge again. He's two for three in the game. Two outs, nobody on base. Bottom of the ninth inning. Can we get a walk off here? That is a low strike. 0-1 oh, count. Right at the knees there on that pitch. There's a okay contact to right field. 
that'll end the ninth. Extra innings. We jump to the bottom of the tenth with Celestino up to bat. He's two for four. Runner, runners on the corners. Nobody away. That's a deep foul ball to the left field bleachers there. Celestino is one of the guys we did get in the trade deadline, so it's nice to see him. A right fielder, a lot of outfield prospects, a lot of corner infield prospects. This team might be set in a few years. 1-1 one, one pitch delivered. That's a deep fly ball to the gap. That's a walk off for Celestino. The Indians do it. They pull it off here. Nice to see a walk off. You know, after last episode, we had a lot of talking, a lot of transactions going on. I wanted to focus on a lot of baseball in this episode. Wyatt Langford up to bat. He's batting 303 for the season right now. Runner at first, two outs in the first inning. Let's see how he fares against Bieber here. 1-0 count. He was a first-round draft pick last year. We took him away from the Rangers. He's going to be a star for the Pirates. I just feel it already. Ground ball up the middle, but nice play at shortstop. That'll retire the side. But Jared Jones on the mound today. It's 2-1 to one right now. Bay with a home run and McCutcheon with a home run. Runner at second. That was a good pitch to swing at just early on the cutter. 0-1 count here in the third inning. And just early on the knuckle curve fly out to left field. That'll end the top of the third. But we get to see Langford in left field here. Instead of DHing, we did move him to left field. Or I paused right field. Geesh. See his arm here. Mm, eh, not much to write home about. Playing right field. Maybe he needs to go to left field. The bat, the catch, catch. Another opportunity for Langford in the field. We have a runner at first, one out. Another line drive. Let's try to throw it to third. Prevent the runner, but that throw is offline. Probably should have hit a should have hit the cutoff man. A lot to work on with him. The future is bright, but now it is seven to three as Jones unravels in the fifth inning, apparently. Runner at second, no outs. Lankford's batting average has dropped to 299. Let's see if we can get him a base hit and get it back above 300 for him. Hottest batter on the team right now. 1-1 one, one count. Just a rough stretch for the Pirates in late July and early August here. Ground ball to the pitcher. He's out. Another opportunity in the field here in the sixth inning for Langford. Contreras on the mound. There's another ground ball. Gun it into second base. Yeah, he's got to work on his arm. Got to work on his arm, but that'll come with time, I I hope. Another opportunity in the field. Let's see how this one goes. Deep fly ball. We're going to have to retreat back. We should be able to play it. There's a runner at second, so let's just throw it to the cutoff man. No way we're getting him at third. Weakness in the outfield. It is now 12 to 3. We got a lot of work to do on the pitching side of this team, and that will come in time, but the bullpen needs to be a focus of the offseason. Some of these youngsters that we got coming up will take care of everything else. 0 oh, 1 count here in the eighth inning. See if Langford can get a base hit today. That's outside. 1 1 count. One ball. One ball, one strike to Langford. Pitch delivered. And Bieber is still on the mound, so it's a nice outing for him. 86 pitches only in the eighth inning. Three runs for the Pirates. Langford's 0 for 3. 1 2 counts. Fouls it off. He's fighting. Staying in there tough. Pitch incoming. We look at ball two. Yeah, gets you a good one up there. 2-2 two, two counts. Fly ball to left field. Okay, contact there. But that'll do it. 
And we end up losing 15 to 4 on this one. Just falling apart for Pittsburgh. Just falling apart. Looking at the month here, we went 10 and 17. Not very good. Let's go ahead and end the episode by looking around the league and see how things are going. The Cubs have overtaken the Reds in the division by seven games. Looks like they're 19 games away from clinching. We are nine away from being eliminated from the Central. Not going to really be running into that. The Dimebacks have pulled within nine games now of the Dodgers. The Dodgers have gone on a three and seven stretch as the Diamondbacks go nine and one in their last 10. Pull within nine games. I don't think they'll catch them, but interesting race to keep an eye on there. And we didn't see the East here. The Braves are up by 16 games over the Phillies with 97 wins already. <laughs> we're, not, we're not even in September. The Braves are 97 and 41. The Nationals are 45 and 91. The wild card race has the Phillies, Diamondbacks, and Reds in it right now with the Cardinals one game out, Marlins four games out. We're down to 11 and a half games. American League East has the Orioles in first place. I'm not surprised by that. Blue Jays in second, Yankees in third. The Central has the Twins top of the Royals by seven games. The Rangers are ahead of the Astros by five. And in the wild card in the American League, we have the Astros, Blue Jays, and Yankees. Angels a game out, Royals four and a half outs. Let's look at some awards right now that are going on as we have a month left in the season. Otani, what a surprise. MVP candidate. Kind of kind of annoying. I don't like the Dodgers. Strider. Oh, Strider got hurt in real life. Oh, I feel so bad for him. Gonna win the Cy Young, it looks like, in our in our franchise. Goldschmidt looking like the batting leader. Paul Goldschmidt of old. 335. He had in his other MVP season, I believe was, yeah, 2022, he batted 317, 321 in 2015. This is Paul Goldschmidt of old. 28 home runs, 91 RBIs with a month left in the season. Gosh, wish he never left Arizona. And we do have a rookie of the year candidate here in Paul Skeens. Not surprised by that. And Lankford is number two on the list. So we could have an award coming our way, and he's all the way up to a 78 overall. Look at all of this improvements. He's 8-7. and seven, 119 innings pitched and 21 starts. Quality starts, he has 8. It's not bad. 121 strikeouts in 119 innings. 4.14 ERA. 1.31 whip. Under one home run per nine innings. The base on balls could use some work. Strikeouts, 9.33. This guy's going to be a stud. Lakeford improving a ton as well. He's 71 overall. Having a good season. Looks like we will have a rookie of the year potentially. See if there's anything else our team is involved in. I'll just kind of scroll through here a little bit slow for you guys to see everything. Hayes has creeped back into the gold glove running. He was third for a while. It looks like he is leading it now. It'd be nice to get him to get a nice run like Arenado had. It looks like he's taken over the torch from Nolan Arenado as the third baseman of the National League. No real surprises anywhere else that we don't have any players showing up. That will change over the next few years. All right, let's take a look at the American League here. Seeger. He's a, he's a stud. Seager's a stud. Lopez looking like he's running away with the running away. He's not. 196 strikeouts is why. 10 and 3, 3.14 ERA. I would give it to Cole right now based on the ERA, but I'm a big ERA guy. Batting style is going to Alvarez here so far. Go ahead and do the same here. There's Evan Carter, the guy we were talking about earlier. He is up for rookie of the year. He did play a little bit last season. He played 23 games for them. I do remember seeing him in the World Series. It looks like he's going to be the American League National, the American League MVP, the guy that they traded that they don't need anymore because of how good Carter is, is in the running for the National League MVP or Rookie of the Year. Pretty sweet. Just keep scrolling through these here for everyone to see. Rizzo. Got a comment that we should go trade for Cedric Mullins. Would be nice. I had him in my franchise last year in MLB 23. Tore it up for us. But these numbers don't look that great. But he is going for the Golden Glove. A 
Vladimir Guerrero is another guy that I ended up picking up as a free agent. All right, I think that'll do it for this episode. Next episode, we will be focusing on the September call-ups and the last month of the season. The Pirates are 62 and 73, a little bit ahead of the Brewers, so we're not the worst team in the division, but there's a lot of teams that have less wins than us, so the draft lottery, we're going to be probably picking in the teens, maybe? Maybe top 10? That'll be interesting. I'm Socks Way Up. I'll catch you on the next episode.